Bingo. About to do a sound check here. One, two. Dudes, dudettes, welcome. Got a video today for you about a Sega Genesis controller. This particular one is having a problem on the B and C buttons. When you press them, nothing happens. It's a real pain. Not much gameplay there. Not much good gameplay. Anyways, let's get started. First thing you'll need is uh, to locate the screws on the back of the controller. Flip it over. You'll see six screws. These are Phillips head screws. Got my trusty Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm going to just uh, take them out. Hang tight. There we go. Some of the screws won't fall out. Um, I have a magnetic screwdriver. Some of them won't come out automatically, and some of them are some of them are really hard to loosen. If you can't uh, loosen it with your fingers, just put the screwdriver firmly in there, seated. Get a pair of pliers and help you to twist, uh, you know, counterclockwise to get that loosened up. Oh, there it goes. Um, if there's still screws in there, just gently lift the back of the controller plate off and make sure all the screws are out. These are fall out, it looks like. Set them to the side. <clears throat> and we're gonna have a look inside. Here is the inside of the controller. It's facing down, of course. The wire comes in and it's secured through these little plastic pegs. You'll see it's looped around. And first thing we're gonna do, or next thing we're gonna do is just take uh, this apart. I usually just wiggle this top part a little bit so the wire comes loose and then it pops out there and then the whole thing will just fish out you'll just fish that bad boy out <clears throat> what we have next are the little rubber semiconductive silicone pads that actually press on the um, let's take a look here this is the inside of the controller these are conductive pads they do not touch each other, but they have interlocking grids. And when the pads uh, are pressed firmly against them, they conduct and the controller registers a key press. So most of the time this is because, uh, well, the problem that I'm having is the keys aren't pressing or the keys aren't registering on uh, B and C. And most of the time this is because of dirty pads. So what I'm gonna do is just clean these pads and let's do that now. Pull these off in order just to get things out of the way. Here's the D pad. Just set this aside. <laughs> the way I do this is I just take some isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%. It's pretty strong. I like it. it dries up fast. Um, take a Q tip, just swab it down, get it wet, knock off that excess and just start cleaning on the pads. Um, these two were the dirtiest, so I'm just gonna start with them. I'm going to uh, take the pad and kind of pull it back like that so the black rubber is exposed. Then I'm just gonna wipe on it. You'll find you'll get some, some black gunk off of this thing once you kind of rub down on it. You see my Q-tip is getting kind of black there. Just get that really good, just kind of bear down on it. Little circular patterns will be best. And go on to the next one. I'm going to go through and clean all these just like that, real quick. Okay, once we've wiped all those pads down, we're going to focus on these uh, conductive surfaces here. I'm going to take the, a clean Q-tip again, dip it in alcohol, same routine as last time. And in the same sort of motion, I'm just going to go through and clean all these pads. Here we go. Just 
Now, as I come to B and C here, uh, let me zoom in. We can see we can get a better view on these pads. There's some residue. These are actually really clean, but there's some residue left over um, on the pads. It's like a buildup. You can see the outside circular part, um, the buildup from the buttons. Sometimes if you spill a drink or just a dusty environment, there'll be crud buildup. So try to hit uh, these areas really well. So there's no markings on them of just like crud, grime. It's been stuck on the pad, keeps it from conducting. So just shine these up. Nice. Um, at this point, you can inspect the controller for any other defects. I know that this one is just having the problem with those two buttons, and I have a sneaking suspicion that it's the dirty pads. Um, this is also a good opportunity to uh, clean this. You can you can clean this controller by taking these extra plastic pieces. You can dump out uh, all the keys there, the buttons, and clean those. Put them in like warm soapy water, slosh them around, use maybe a q-tip or whatever. Should be all right. Anyways, reassembly of this guy or gal. Let's rearrange. <clears throat> Face down there. D-pad, doesn't matter which way it goes. Just put it back in there. It's keyed. Um, doesn't matter which way's up. Got the ABCs. There's the B button right there. Only drops in one way. You'll see. You try to put it in wrong. One tab, it's fatter than the other. So it's kind of keyed. Just try it. This is A. And that must be C. Start button's kind of weird. Just look at the thickness of the tabs. There we go. Now we're going to replace the pads on top of the buttons. <clears throat> the pads have little circular divots, and so do the buttons. Um, just kind of loosely set them down in there. Whoops. I wanted to keep these in order because I know that B and C were not working. Just want to make sure that I haven't changed the problem to another key. I'm keeping these in order. There's the start. There we go. The D pad sets back over these two little pegs. Right there. Right down. Alright, now that you have all the buttons and pads in place, take your controller, brown side up. And there are little raised sections. Zoom in here. <clears throat> These areas right here are raised to take the circuit board. Make sure that that sits down in there. You'll see these circles line up right with them. You kind of have to do this sort of all at one time. Let me move this here. Loop the wire back through those plastic pegs while you're placing the controller down. If it bumps around a little bit, that's okay. No big deal. Just make sure it doesn't feel like any of the buttons have moved. Fish that string or a wire back down in there. It kind of semi holds itself. You can put your finger on it and turn it over. See if the buttons are feeling like they're in place. Yeah. Keep your finger on it. Don't let it fall back out. You have to start over. You don't like that. All right. Now the back goes on, as you would expect. Keep everything tight, you know. This sandwich is on here. Just feel it. You'll feel the creases. Now it doesn't snap, I'm holding it, so just don't don't fail now. You're almost there. Grab your screws again. And put them back in.
Okay, now it's time to test this thing. I'm going to uh, cut the video now and take this thing in. Oh yeah, feels good. Test it out and see what we got. And we're back and it works. So the buttons are responding now. It's great. Uh, a, B, and C, all they feel great. Um, so it was just dirty pads, um, as I suspected. I've cleaned so many of these and they are highly suspicious when you get an inactive controller. So if you're out at like a flea market or something, don't worry about picking up a controller if you do get a chance to test it um, or not. If the buttons feel good, most likely you'll be able to just, you know, follow this video and clean it up and you'll be ready to go. See you next time.